GM podcast. Join the conversation with global innovators as they share their journeys, discuss the state of the industry, and share insight into the future of media for brands, agencies, and production companies. Hello and welcome to the Movidium Creative Leaders Podcast. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Mike Rogers and, and Luke Nutt. Uh, guys, welcome to the Movidium Podcast. Hi, thanks. Thank you very much. I think this is, as I was saying just before the call, this is the first time out of 350 episodes we've we've had more than two people simultaneously on the floor. But it, it's particularly interesting because you've recently uh, co-directed uh, a very interesting project. And Mike, perhaps you, you want to start with you know, what, what was the thing that caused me to call you up and, and ask you to come on the uh, Movidium Creative Leaders uh, sure. So we've just finished off a film called The Still, and it tells the story of specifically um, a doctor friend of ours and some of the experiences she's been having fighting the coronavirus on the front lines. And, um, but talking about London as a whole and how it's come to a standstill and how while uh, all these NHS key workers are out there fighting on the front lines during all this chaos, we're actually, the streets are empty and we're kind of left to stand still in our homes and all, all these iconic landmarks kind of left lifeless. Yeah, it's interesting. So, no, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, they, that's what's actually very, very captivating about the film is you, you've only seen this before in you know, hugely financed Hollywood you know, horror movies or whatever, where, where the streets are empty. Uh, and, and actually, it draws you into the narrative in a very interesting way. Um, um, and how did you, Luke, how did you, how did you meet Mike? Um, so Mike and I met um, many years ago when Mike was um, working as a, uh, as a promo producer and director at BT Sports. Uh, I was freelance at the time. So I was freelancing uh, with BT, um, uh, sort of, you know, carrying out the same role um, as a promo producer and director. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was a great team of people, but Mike and I definitely, um, uh, you know, clicked straight away, um, really loved the work that he um, was producing. Um, and I hope he would say the same thing back to me. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, but, yeah, no, it was definitely, it was just, it was just, um, you know, just a, a, a meeting of, um, like I said, everyone on the team was great. But yeah, I loved the work that they were doing there. Um, Mike was very welcoming. All of the team were, were great. And um, yeah, it was just like the start of a, of a of a great friendship, I think. And obviously, when you can combine friendship with with work and, and creativity, and I think I, I, I would assume Mike would say the same thing, but often this doesn't really feel like a job. It feel, It's something that we, yeah. we really, really love doing and um and I guess we're very lucky in that sense because, you know, to be able to wake up every day and kind of be able to express yourself creatively and, and have these sort of brainstorms and ideas and, and be able to execute them is just um, is brilliant. And to be able to do that together, it, you know, we, we come from a, a sporting background. So a lot of the work that we've done has been sort of within the sports sector. But to be able to branch out and do some stuff slightly outside of sport is something that. I don't know about Mike, but for me personally, I've tried to, um, you know, I've tried to, to, to get myself involved in, whether that be music videos or, or entertainment or uh, current affairs, you know. Um, but this just felt like a, an amazing opportunity to, to do that. And um, I'm glad that, you know, Mike could help out. And obviously Mike went freelance, um, what, a couple of years ago now, Mike, I think, uh, maybe 16 months ago. Um and I think, um, you know, at this time where there was so much uncertainty over, you know, the work that we were receiving, um, you know, like I said, we work in sport. So, you know, with the world of sport being put on hold, it was uh, it was a bit of a difficult time for us. Um, mm. And well, the sort of world, the world, the world of everything sort of being put on hold. Well, I, I suppose that's why in the still we have absolutely empty streets. <laughs> and yeah. And, and, to, and to bring it back to to the film, there, I mean, you know, there are some remarkable images captured. So, so how how did you sort of piece that together? And um, you know, obviously, this is a podcast; we might be able to throw a few of these images up on on the YouTube version of it. But how did you actually, you know, execute though? You know, was, was it multiple camera DOPs, or was it one person that it was nipped around? Yeah. yeah. So we had, um, um, I mean, three main DOPs, I would say. Um, who contributed um, a lot to this, uh, each kind of in their different ways, some filming things in, in their homes and getting their wife to stand in as an actress for the first time and, and others um, getting shots of streets on their daily exercise. Um, but 
also we've just got a, a load of stuff filmed on phone from friends and family and it was a mm. really great collaborative effort in that sense and that's that sort of i mean presumably i mean you know filmmaking has always been about collaboration but when you put an, an extra pressure on it i mean it's amazing what you can come up with and you had to act quite quickly to kind of get this made and get it up and out there yeah i think so i mean um a, a lot of the shots that we we that we got of london was um it came just before the sort of the more um, serious sort of uh, sanctions were imposed in terms of lockdown. So we were quite lucky. I think we, we did sort of, we saw the opportunity early. Um, and yeah, I think we, we kind of got out there and, and managed to get a lot of what we were hoping to get before it was, it was too late in a sense. Uh, you know, of course we were still respecting the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the advice from uh, the authorities in terms of social distancing, which is, you know, why we, we were, sort of remotely directing this but yeah sure. it, I think sure. timing was key and we managed to get a lot of it early doors which is great mm. yeah i mean it was um a bit of a new thing to direct a film without ever leaving the house i think it was um quite a uh, funny experience for both luke and i but uh, it's it just kind of goes to show that tra traditionally you have these big crews and actually a lot can be achieved just um with a one one man crew with a camera Mm, mm. As long as you've got a, a strong sort of idea behind it, which is this certainly has. Exactly. And how did you how did yeah. you write the uh, how did you write the script for the voiceover and, and how did was that, I mean, that again probably an online collaboration? It was a good collaboration. We spoke quite a lot before we actually got into the nitty gritty of it of what the tone and rhythm and intonation of the script would all be. Um, I think we just like threw a couple of lines at each other, and a, a, a lot of them stuck in the final thing and then I, it was a matter of um just uh i kind of sat down and, and took all of, all of this conversation we had and, and and turned it into one piece of prose um and from then as you know it kind of chopped and changed around in the edit a little bit we lost a few lines here and there but the essence of it and the, the emotion that we were trying to get across um was uh, was all retained and and really came from those um, early discussions. And in terms of the distribution, I mean, have you sent it off to various groups and communities? That, or I mean, is it just just on YouTube? Or I mean, and 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 also, how are you going to use potentially to you reuse some of this material that was shot? I mean, you know, there's plenty of stock libraries that would be fascinated by this sort of material. I mean, is there is there a, mm. a reuse capability somewhere in there? Uh, well, just, yeah, I mean, in terms of distribution, I think what we really wanted to do was, um, try and kind of give it the growth and the outlet as, as organically as possible. I don't think we had an opportunity to potentially attach um, a brand name to it. There's a lot of, uh, companies and brands out there that, that are looking for content, but we really felt like we didn't want this to be watered down or, or to be attributed to any one particular brand. So we were just releasing it from our instagram really to begin with and um it picked up uh we managed to get some influential figures with some with some pretty good following um numbers behind them to to share it and post it and such so um and harley who did our voiceover he's he's got quite a big following as he's from Brizzle kick so it just gained loads of traction we had a you know i think we've probably had close to half a million hits across all sort of social media platforms now yeah um which is great and then and then because of that people have been reaching out actually funny enough have been reaching out to request um usage uh, um in the terms of uh, of using it as, uh, as stock we've had some people reach out and saying um you know purchase some of the shots that you've got in your film so i get i don't know i mean it's not really something that i've that we've really well i've, I've really thought about as such in terms of um making the footage available i guess we wanted people to really experience our film as it is at the moment before we make it available, I guess. But I mean, yeah. it's definitely something interesting. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's part of the success is that everyone's been able to take ownership of it. It's very relatable with, uh, without, obviously it's quite a, a new thing for us even to make a film without a brand message that we have to hit. So that was quite um, freeing in many senses. And I just think it's, it's also for, for the audiences, people from all different backgrounds can relate to it and share it. And, um, and 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 it kind of grew from there. Mm. So, well, you've made, you've, uh, you've made the the ultimate sort of water cooler sort of thank you, really, huh? because because you know everyone's is similar. To, I mean, if you think back to the era of the, you know, for early television, where you only had a couple of channels and everyone would go to work the next day and discuss the program, whereas now you've got Netflix and Amazon and the distribution's so much, so many different channels that no one's watched the same thing simultaneously. Whereas here, everyone is having the 
absolute same experience of lockdown and, and gratitude for the NHS. And so it hits a chord, which is, you know, everyone can relate to. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's that's what has been most rewarding for us is the fact that, you know, like Mike said, we haven't had to necessarily hit a message. So we have had the freedom to build this and to deliver it as we wanted to. And ultimately, it, you know, it, we did want to show our appreciation for the work that the NHS are doing on our front line. And I think that this freedom has given us that opportunity. And we're so um, we're just so glad that it's been so well received. You know, um, it's been a really kind of rewarding project to work on in that sense. And when the world sort of comes to sort of unlock a little bit and people start to slowly progress back to, you know, what, what the hell they used to formally work, can, can you see, you know, yourself being approached to develop other projects remotely or with much bigger collaborative teams around the globe for brands? I think so. I think this time is changing um, the way in which production will go forward, I think. I mean, not you know across many different platforms people are showing um productivity and, uh, and and showing that they can adapt and still do what they need to do from home so i think in that sense it, it will it, it will change the landscape in production and and i think that you know we've been able to do this just because of the, the help that people have been willing to give us has been you know the the collaboration has been wonderful but i think yeah i think there will be yeah, a change in the landscape for sure moving forward. Demand, demand for this way of working, which I think is this, yeah. is, probably, this is probably an early example of it. I think so, yeah. Good. And, and what, what, what's on the horizon for, for, for you guys in terms of your, your sort of directing sort of journey? What, what's, the, what's the plan? What's the, the plan going forward? Part two. What's part, part, yeah, part two. <laughs> exactly. Part two. Well, funny enough, we had a conversation about We're this discussing. morning. But, yeah. yeah. Um, there are some ideas in motion, but we think maybe, I don't know, Mike, maybe we should, uh, I think they're a bit early to share just now, but (laughs) there's, um, there's definitely talks about a part two. I think we, um, are very open to like collaborating more. I mean, we didn't come into this as a traditional director duo. We've both, um, our careers have had a lot of crossover, but essentially we, um, we're individual directors, but I think it's, it's really shown, um, how that we enjoy collaborating together and we're definitely going to con- continue to do that great well look i think we, we I th- by the time we get this out there there'll be an audience for part two so do keep us posted um and i'd like to wrap sure up really and, and and give you a big thank you so thank you very much indeed to to mike rogers and, and luke nutt for who've, who've co-directed the still which we'll be linking to below uh, which is a tribute to the nhs and it really is a remarkable piece of filmmaking at a remarkable time uh, delivered in a remarkable way so um congratulations on that success and uh, i'm sure everyone who's, who's watched it is very appreciative and humbled by the work Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Thank you. Appreciate it. You've been listening to the Movidium podcast. Movidium is a world-class network of production talent complemented by secure tools that blend hiring, communication, and payments. Find out more at movidium.com.